Hi, John here from The Grape and Granary, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the 30-minute mozzarella cheese from our 30-minute mozzarella cheese kit. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first step is going to be to open up our pack of rennet tablets, and as you can see, the rennet tablets are scored. For each gallon of milk, we only need a quarter of a tablet, so I'm going to break this tablet into quarters using just one quarter of the tablet. I'm going to break it up a little bit with my fingers, and I'm going to put it into one cup of cool uh, water with no chlorine. Okay, and we're just going to let that dissolve, stir it around a little bit, and we're going to set this aside. Okay, our next step is going to be to measure out one and a half teaspoons of citric acid. So we're going to take one cup of cool dechlorinated water, add it to a small pitcher, and then we'll measure out our one and a quarter or one and a half teaspoons of citric acid and add that to our water. Okay, our next step is just to go ahead and simply pour the one cup of cool water with our dissolved citric acid into our stock pot. And to that, we're going to go ahead and add our milk. I do want to take uh, just a minute to say something about milk. First of all, you never want to use ultra pasteurized milk. It will not make cheese at all. Second of all, pasteurized milk is just fine. The milk we're using today is a local brand. It's not homogenized, but it is pasteurized. I've found that making cheese from non-homogenized milk is a little bit easier, but really uh, any store-bought milk will work. Um, but always remember, never use ultra-pasteurized milk. It won't make cheese at all. So we're going to go ahead and add our milk now to our stock pot. Okay, the next step, we're going to apply some light, gentle heat to the bottom of our stock pot. So I have our flame on about medium and I'm going to stir the milk constantly because we do not want it to scorch. I'm going to put in a floating uh, dairy thermometer and what we want to do is we want to raise the temperature up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and then we're going to turn off the heat. Okay, now that we've warmed our milk to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to go ahead and add our prepared rennet solution that we made up before we started. And I'm going to gently pour this into our milk and I'm going to stir for about 30 seconds. Okay, we're just going to let this sit for about five minutes now, and we'll see you in five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes now, and I think you can see we're getting a pretty good clear separation between our whey and our curds. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and cut our curd. We're going to cut that solid mass of cheese curd with our knife, and we're just going to kind of make like a checkerboard pattern, so we'll go this way, then we're going to go that way, horizontally, vertically, and then we'll go at an angle. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We want to cut the curd into approximately uh, a half an inch or one inch chunks. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and heat our curd then to approximately 105 degrees. So we're going to turn the heat back on and we're going to slowly raise the temperature to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, while you're heating your milk, you want to constantly be stirring so that you're not going to scorch your milk. Okay, so once we've reached 105 degrees Fahrenheit, we're just going to stir our curds around for about three minutes. What you can see is happening is the curd is becoming a bit more firm and it's kind of clumping together. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, now that we've stirred our curd for about three minutes, we're ready to go ahead and start separating our curds from our whey. So we're going to take our slotted spoon now and we're going to start to scoop out the curd, leaving the whey behind. Okay, now for all intents and purposes, we've pretty much gotten all of the whey separated from the curd. You can see that the curd that we've collected has got a little bit of whey in there, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of strain that off. At this point, we're just going to start heating the curd and separating the whey from the curd. Each gallon of milk will make approximately one pound of finished cheese. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our curds and we're going to put the curds in the microwave for approximately one minute. Okay, we've microwaved it for approximately one minute and this is pretty hot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring it over to our pot here, and again, we want to start separating again some of the whey from the curds. Once we pour some of the whey off, we're going to take the curds and we're going to kind of 
get it up into one piece here and fold it. As you can see, it's really starting to come together as a single cheese. And we're going we're to pour off the excess whey, kind of squeeze it again gently to, re to remove some more of the whey, separating the whey. And then we're going to go ahead and add one teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix that in. I'm just going to kind of fold the salt into the cheese. It almost looks, at this point, looks kind of like a dough ball. Okay, we're going to go ahead now. We're going to microwave this curd for another 30 seconds. Okay, we're going to remove the cheese. We're going to go ahead and separate the curd. Again, you can see we've got a little more liquid coming out of here. And you can see now that this is quite hot, you can see how it starts to stretch. And the more we work the curd here, the firmer the finished cheese is going to be. Again, the idea is to kind of stretch it and push it to get the whey out of the cheese. I really recommend wearing gloves because this is quite hot. Okay, now that we've worked the cheese quite well, you can see it's starting to get kind of a shiny look to it. This is a great opportunity at this point to go ahead and slice off a small piece and you can go ahead and taste it. Mmm, very good. Once we've worked it, we can go ahead and cool it down. At this point, while it's still warm, you can shape it. You can shape it into a log, you can shape it into a ball, however you want to do it. Some people will actually braid it. And then we want to go ahead and cool the cheese down. Okay, after we warm the cheese, we're going to go ahead and submerse it in some 50 degree uh, tap water, cool tap water. That'll kind of firm the cheese up and protect the texture. Okay, we've water bathed our cheese for about five minutes, cooled it down. If you wanted to, you could put it in an ice bath. Again, this will protect the cheese's texture. So over time, if you're going to store it for a while, it won't become grainy. Personally, my cheese, when I make it at home, never lasts that long. It's usually gone within an hour. If you wanted to, you could blend this with some herbs. You could serve it with some prosciutto. Personally, I like to use my mozzarella cheese to make pizza. So I'll slice it up very thin and lay it on uh, my homemade pizza. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Give us a call or send us an email. Um, we're here all the time to answer questions, and I hope you liked it, uh, this video.